when we consider whether to use missing data techniques or not in our empirical analysis, we need to first understand the consequences of missing data on an analysis where we don't take the missingness into account. If the consequences are minor, then using missing data techniques might not be worth the effort. So what are the consequences of missing data? The consequences depend on a couple of different things. First, there is the amount of missingness. So if there is just one observation out of 1000 that contains missing data, then the consequences are probably not that severe. In more general cases, when the amount of missingness is non-trivial, the impact of that missing data or the effect of the missing data depends on two things. It depends on the patterns, so what data are missing, and it depends on the mechanism. So why are the data missing? And to understand why both of these matters, we will take a look at an example. But let's take a look at what Woolridge has to say about this topic first. So uh, Woolridge says that um, if the data are missing at, at random, then uh, things are not that complicated. But uh, this is a slight misstatement because if we consider the missing data terminology, what Woolrich here is referring to is missing completely at random. So if there is, is no pattern between the missingness and the observed value, so if the missingness is a purely a random process, then what happens is basically that your sample size gets smaller. You can use listwise deletion and if your sample size is going to be adequate even after deletion, then you are going to be fine. So what matters here if the data are missing completely at random is that uh, the sample size is small, smaller. If the sample size is still adequate, then uh, there is not really a big problem. Woolrich takes a rather negative view on missing data techniques. So, so he says that uh, the, the consequences of, of using these techniques or the advantage of the modern techniques can be small and they can be complicated to apply. This is uh, in a way true but also in a way false. If you have lots of missing data, then the efficiency gains under missing complete at random can be non-trivial. For example, if you end up dropping half of your data because of missingness, you probably should be using modern missing data techniques. Also, Woolrich says that these are difficult to apply and that is also partially true. Multiple imputation can get very complicated. So that's one of the two modern missing data techniques. But using maximum likelihood estimation for missing data is, is very simple from the user's perspective. You simply turn the feature on in your structural ecosystem modeling software and then the software will apply that technique. So using some of these techniques is, can be complicated in the case of multiple imputation, but if you just apply maximum likelihood estimation for missing data, then that is very simple to do. And in fact, some structural ecosystem modeling software default to using, multiple, using this missing data analysis because it's, there's really not many downsides to it. So what are the consequences then? Woolrich further explains that the consequences depend on what does the missingness depend on. So we have to understand that, that both these scenarios are exogenous sample selection and endogenous sample selection. These refer to either missing not at random or missing at random mechanism. And the difference is whether a missing value in a variable depends on the value of that variable itself. But these scenarios that Woolrich addresses are about listwise deletion. So if there is missingness in any of the variables, then that case will be dropped, like all values of that, that case will be dropped. So there is really no difference between missing not at random and missing at random if you apply listwise deletion. If you are using modern missing data techniques, which use the information from those variables that you have to estimate those variables that you don't have, then whether it's missing not at random or missing at random makes a difference. Interestingly, if you have x variables or exogenous variables, variables that you observe and variables that you assume to be fixed, then missingness on those variables does not have an effect. If your missingness depends on the dependent variable, then that is a lot more problematic. This is a, a general rule. 
missingness in a dependent variable is more problematic than missingness in an independent variable. If you have a latent variable model where you have multiple indicators for exogenous latent variables, then the missingness will be in those indicators. Because the indicators depend on the latent variable, they are considered Y variables in this kind of analysis. So if you have a latent variable model, then missingness in any of these variables that you observe is generally problematic, unless the data is missing completely at random. Let's take a look at an example how this works. So this is our full data. We have 1000 observations of X and Y. Y is the dependent variable, X is the independent variable. We have two regression lines here. The red line is the population regression line and the coefficient is, is one, slope is zero. And the red line is the estimated regression line from this sample of 1000. The lines overlap almost perfectly because regression is pretty precise when you have such large sample size. What will happen when some of these data is missing? If the data are missing on X, and again, we don't know whether this is missing, not at random or missing at random, because we're dropping both X and Y for those cases where there's missingness. The difference would be that if the data is missing on, on Y, but it depends on X, then uh, we would have missing at random, but not missing not at random problem, because we can use the Y, the X values to predict the Ys. Okay, so what is the problem here? What, will, what is the consequence? We drop all cases where X is uh, less than zero. So all of that is missing. There is systematic missingness with respect to X. And uh, we can see that the consequences are not that severe. So the regression line, the, uh, the uh, blue line here, the estimated line is still going to be approximately correct. What we lose is precision. So the red line and blue line are not as well aligned as before, but with 500 observations remaining, probably wouldn't be a big problem. So dropping based on X values, if the missingness depends on X values, that causes inefficiency, but it does not cause inconsistency or bias in regression analysis. If the missingness depends on the Y values, then things are a lot more complex, a lot more severe. We can see that if we drop using the same rule, we drop everything on the, uh, when y is below zero, the regression line is going to be biased. The slope is, is uh, too small and the intercept is too high. So uh, the results will be inconsistent. Why is this the case? Uh, you can think of it basically because uh, this missingness here depends on an unobserved quantity. So the y is the, uh, the fitted part calculated based on X and the unobserved part, they are the error term. And because we have missingness that depends on an unobserved variable, the error term, therefore we have a problem. That's one way to understand it. But if you simply look at this, uh, this, uh, this graph, you can see that those observations that have a large negative value in the error term are more likely to be dropped than those observations that have a large positive value in the error term. And this causes the error term to be correlated with the X and that causes an endogeneity problem. So missingness on Y is more severe than missingness on X in regression analysis. Now, what are the consequences for different techniques under different mechanisms? I will be talking about four different techniques. We have the listwise deletion, which is basically dropping a case if there is a even a single missing value for that in, in any of the variables that we have. So that is, uh, that's the default in, in many statistical software. Regression analysis only uses complete cases and uh, discards the rest. Then we have mean imputation. Mean imputation is uh, basically uh, a technique where you take the mean of a variable and then you uh, substitute that mean to all missing values of that variable. And this is sometimes recommended as a simple, a useful technique for dealing with missing data in some entry level quantitative data analysis books. It's generally a really bad technique. Then we have modern missing data techniques. This includes multiple imputation and maximum likelihood estimation with missing data. And then we have selection models, particularly Heckman's selection model, 
where we model the cause of the missingness and uh, that's one equation and then we have the, uh, the equation that we want to estimate and we use information from the missingness equation to correct the equation of interest. I have another video of all these techniques. So what are the consequences? If data are missing completely at random then the data are basically a, a smaller sample of what we would have if we had observed all the variables. In that case list wise deletion is consistent but it's inefficient because we can get more precise estimates using uh, these modern mixing data techniques. Mean imputation is always inconsistent and inefficient. So we will get results that are systematically incorrect and results that are less precise than what we would get using modern missing data techniques. When we have the missing at random, so the missingness depends on, on some of the variables but not the missing variable, then uh, listwise deletion is going to be inconsistent and inefficient. Fortunately, modern missing data techniques are still consistent under this scenario. They are uh, less inefficient than uh, listwise deletion. So having the full data of course would be the most efficient technique, the most efficient way of doing things but we don't have the full data so the modern missing data techniques are the best that we have uh, available. Now missing not at random means that there are missingness depends on the missing value. So if we have a uh, missingness in the y variable then that missingness depends on the values of the y. That is the most problematic scenario and uh, Listwise deletion, mean imputation and modern missing data techniques are all inconsistent under that scenario. The selection model can be consistent but it requires some strong assumptions about things that we cannot observe. So selection models can be useful when data are missing not at random but they are basically trading one set of assumptions, the missing at random assumption uh, to another set of assumptions which depend on, on what kind of selection model you're applying. So these selection models are by no means silver bullets and applying selection models when their assumptions don't hold can be actually worse than using these modern missing data techniques that assume that the data is missing at random but not missing not at random. So the consequences are basically depend on the pattern and they depend on the mechanism and they depend on, on which technique you apply. Generally the safest, things to, safest thing to do is to apply these modern missing data techniques and it may, it's not always as complicated as Woolrich implies.